Aditha Karikalan laughed and shook his body after hearing the accusation made by Kanthamaran against his dear friend Vandiyathevan. Kandamara. Are you saying that Vandiyadeva stabbed you in the back? Why did you turn your back on him? He asked and started laughing again. Gondamara's dark face turned red, the eyes were like pumpkins and the lips were twitching. Sir. Do you consider this a laughing matter? He asked. Kandamara. Do you say that I should not laugh? Laughter is a gift given by the gods to human beings. A cow does not laugh, a goat does not laugh, a horse does not laugh, a lion does not laugh, even monkeys, who are very fond of fun games, do not laugh. Only those who have taken human birth can laugh. So, you you say you shouldn't laugh at me? It's been a long time since I even laughed. Friend. Now I'm surprised to hear the sound of my laughter. You say you shouldn't laugh at me. Said Aditha Karigalan. Sir. I am also happy that you are laughing and enjoying. But don't laugh thinking that I have turned my back on this Surati Saran. When I was not expecting him, he hid behind me and stabbed me. By the grace of Goddess Durga and the kind treatment of Goddess Nandini, I survived and woke up. Investigate yourselves and do justice. Or give me authority at once to punish him myself. Said Kanamaran. My friend. I must inquire and give justice. There has never been a case of a man asking for justice from the kings of the Sembian clan and not getting justice. Did not Sibi, the first king of our lineage, cut his flesh to pieces to give justice to the pigeon? The man of our clan, Manu Nidhi Chola, gave his son to give justice to the cow. No sacrifice. Thou art no lower than a dove, nor lower than a cow. I will not refuse to do justice to thee. Be patient till I examine him. Mighty one. Before giving other details of thy journey, thou hadst better retort the charge of Kanamaran. What dost thou say? He was stabbed in the back by thee. Really? Then why did you do such an unheroic? Petty thing. Why did you do it? He. Asked. Ask him whom he saw that night in the treasure land of the great scavenger. Ask what happened in his Kadampur mansion on the 18th day of Puruku in the month of ADI. Ask who was hiding there in the fog that day. At this time, Kanamaran, trembling in body and slurring his tongue, said, I. You wretch. Stop your ridiculous talk. Otherwise, you will be a prey to this work. Saying that, he took up the task. Aditha Karikalan was a little surprised to see his agitation. He snatched the work from the hand of Gandamaran and bent its stem with his iron hands. It broke that vel badar. Aditha Karikalan threw away both parts of it and said, Be careful. I cannot stand idly by as my friends fight in front of me. Watch. If any of these men ever picks up work or sword again, it is your responsibility to imprison him immediately. He said. Immediately Vandiyadeva took the sword from him and gave it to Parthipendra. Parthipendra reluctantly took the sword. Kandamara. Valavarayan replied to your accusation. I will investigate the truth of it myself and make a judgment. Are you going to answer the questions he asked? Karikalan asked. Gandamaran gulped and said, Sir. I have sworn not to tell anyone about those things. Parthipendra now intervened and said, O king. It seems that these people are accusing each other of something about a woman. So it is better to hear them separately. He said. Yes, Parthiba. I think so too. All three of you separately fell in love with the Isla Irani of Pavur. That's why you're trying to devour each other. Carrie Kaler said and laughed again. Parthipendra's face sneered, he said, Sir. It seems that you have decided to laugh at any important matter today. Well, I will say what I have to say. I have many doubts about this Vandiyadeva. I will say only the important thing now. Their dear brother jumped into the middle of a storm in the middle of the sea to save him from a burning ship. Then Pawnee's Selvara not to be seen. 
he alone has sprouted here like a tamarind without destroying the main of that day. Ask him what has become of his brother. If the ocean has him, this enemy will be responsible for it. He said. Carrie Kaler looked at Van Diathevan and asked, What is your reply? He asked. Why didn't his men also jump into the sea to protect the prince? Did they think it was funny that he was being carried away by the sea? Parthipendra's face exploded. His hands throbbed, the lips also trembled, the body swayed. Sir! This fool seems to blame me. He even seems to say that I have killed the prince myself. I cannot put up with this for a moment. He said. Carrie Gallon glared at him and said, Part Hepa. Did I say so? You three, my lovely companions, have come to the point of biting and devouring each other. I do not blame you for all this. Such was the power of that Queen of Palvur. I myself have realized that such was the power of that Queen of Palavur. You and Kanamaran should mount the horse and ride slowly ahead. I will come back a little after hearing the details of his journey. I will inquire into your accusations and find out the truth. But be sure of one thing. You three must remain friends. Nothing would displease me more than that if you quarreled with each other. Parthipendra and Gandamaran, having no choice but to mount their respective horses, went ahead. Then all were Kadi and Vandiyathevan came near him and said to him, Father! You have become very wicked. You have escaped by speaking very cleverly without telling lies or revealing the truth. He said. It was then that Aditha Karakalan's gaze fell on all were Kadian who came there. Oko. Who is he? He is a face I have seen somewhere. He asked. Yes, my lord. You saw me a few years ago. Your voice is a voice heard. Yes sir. Three years ago you heard my voice at a very important moment. A dark shadow suddenly appeared on Aditha Karakalar's face. Three years ago, the pivotal moment, what was it, was it the voice I heard when I wandered the Vegai River Island in search of an enemy? Could it even be? That voice was my voice, O King. It was I who told them from the cover of the tree where the enemy was hiding. A.G.A. What a terrible day that was. Even today I shudder to think of the frenzy I felt on that day. Vaishnava. Why did you hide in the forest that day? Why did you transform yourself into a monster? King. You said it yourselves a while ago. About the frenzy they had that day. You cut down everyone you saw in front of you and for a while I wanted to live. Is that the only reason? How many times have I cried out with a sore throat, let the monster come out and guide me? Why didn't you come out even then? I don't want my adopted sister, now Ila Irani of Pavur to incur her unending wrath. Makes me think I'm the only one subject to her unquenchable wrath. Ah, Santala! Saying that, Carrie Kaler drew the knife from between. Van Dye the Van got scared. He thought that all Workadian's life was over with that day. Very politely, sir. This Vaishnava has come from the first minister. Listen to the message he has brought and punish him. He said. Aha! What is the use of punishing him? What is the use of punishing anyone else? Saying that, Carrie Gallon put the knife in its sheath. All Workadian does not seem to be as scared as Van Diathevan was when he saw Karakalan's anger. With a strange smile on her face, she said, O oh King! I have not met them all these days, thinking that you will turn their anger on me. My sister's anger on me is still not over. Till today she is stubbornly refusing to see me. But her anger on them seems to be over. Beloved of Nandini Devi! Did you go to the Kadampur Palace for a party after seeing Thirumukha Alai? He said. A.G.A. You wretched Vaishnava! How did you know that? Kari Kalan asked. Sir! I am the servant of First Minister Enrid Ha. No small thing can happen in this Chola kingdom without the First Minister knowing. All Workadians said. Keep watching! One day in that love, I will join Anuradhan and you for the nation. Now both of you get on the horse. 
come on either side of me and let's go on talking, said Aditha Karikalan. 